research. I, yeah. Sorry. I'm loving this. I'm loving that we, we, we dived in even before, you know, just by the nature of the discussion. And that's kind of how George and I were thinking this would go. We definitely have some structure um, and some, some topics and kinds of things, but it definitely can take the direction we're, where we are all interested. Um, okay, George, I'll turn it over to you. Do you want me to share the slides? Um, oh, I, did. Yes, I please. I can, I can share, but uh, there's a little wonky thing that happens, uh, like too much taking over of my screen here, Got it. Uh, if it's okay. And, and then if we need to switch off, um, uh, and I just dropped the link into the chat as well. Um, um, so um, I, I think we better say uh, officially good good morning since we kind of slid into uh, uh, recording here. Uh, I'm George Station. I'm a lecturer at uh, Cal State Monterey Bay, and my colleague uh, Amy. Uh, uh, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Amy Escalante. I'm also at Cal State Monterey Bay. And um, I, I uh, want to add that we both uh, work uh, uh, as lecturers in various departments, uh, be, being lecturers, but also uh, with our uh, Center for uh, Teaching, Learning, and Assessment. Uh, and that's actually what connected us to uh, work on some other ancillary topics uh, that have uh, just crossed our uh, teaching and learning spheres. Uh, and uh, this is one of them. So uh, welcome to uh, our uh, funkily titled An Excursion Through the Interstices uh, 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 Generative AI and EdTech. And um, uh, I, I guess I, uh, since I picked one or two of those words, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'll say, you know, why the funky title? Um, in um, one of my social media lives, um, somebody tied the word interstices to the types of things that we um, talked about, and it kind of stuck with me that we aren't always uh, concerned with the main topics that um, either the edtech world or mainstream media uh, were saying was important. We'd be talking about a lot of other things in between those topics and bridging and connecting and, uh, and networking across those topics. So that just stuck. And um, um, excursion, I'm not sure how we landed on it, but it's also stuck because we're uh, going to have a discussion. We're going to do a few things, uh, uh, hopefully, uh, during uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, full session here. Uh, but um, we're going to visit and stay with what works for the room today. We're a little flexible on that. So it's not a straight presentation um, that's um, um, so guided that we don't get to branch off and have fun with it. Uh, and we really do want uh, participation and new topics and sidetracks and discussion from everybody. Uh, Amy? Yeah. Um, um, so this agenda, again, just as George mentioned, you know, we have it structured around a couple of themes. However, if it were wanting to take it in a specific direction and really spend a lot more time there, there's certain certainly a lot of flexibility there. Um, but some of the major, well, first we want to, we'll spend some time building community, of course. Um, and then the three major themes that we kept, both George and I were interested in and we kept finding research on um, is AI just a tool, I'm taking a, a closer look at that. Um, the ethics around AI, which we realize is a massive topic, but there's a couple of areas that we're going to explore in that. And then also AI and academia. Um, we're not going to be focusing on how to use AI in your classrooms so much because there's some more great sessions that will be covering that, but more just the general role of AI in academia. For instance, the Otter AI or the, um, now I can't remember the one that joined us. Um, the Brandon and Zachary's. I'm going to have to read AI. Up. Thank you. <laughs> and, and, you know, using it in your classroom, not as a teaching tool, but as maybe writing letters of recommendation, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, so we have, uh, again, we've already discussed most of these. So let's get into the check ins and introductions. Um, and let me, we have a, whoops, a um, enabled, let's see, 
and I can grab those. Uh, oh, oh, did you? Oh, it looks just, like you just did. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I think it's easier if you grab that kind of thing from okay. now. On, so it's okay, not... sure. I'll grab those. Okay, so what we uh, we've got our otters here. Our um, actually our campus critter, our mascot is the otter uh, because we're on the Monterey Bay in California. Uh, um, and I know that in a previous session, um, we've had images of cats, and there are probably others out there as well. Uh, but uh, when we came across the otters, we started using this with a couple of our classes uh, to be uh, fortunately to the amusement of our students. <laughs> and everybody was ready to participate in this. And um, and Amy has also dropped into the chat um, our thoughts on the text version. But what we'd like to do is just a quick mood check. And um, we know that um, um, not everybody has the same visual uh, that we've got. And there may also be vision impaired people uh, in the session. Uh, so we've also included a uh, text version. This is just the uh, facilitators uh, thought about what the otters uh, represent. Um, and I'll read through them real quickly. Um, uh, there are nine uh, otter pictures of otters on the screen. And um, there is a, um, a is appalled or overwhelmed. B is thrilled or pleased. C is just, oh dear. Uh, um, D is relaxed, kind of laid back. Uh, e is skeptical. Uh, F, this is amazing, uh, with a uh, wide open, amazed look. Um, G is grumpy or sleepy. H, anticipating. And I is unsure of what's going to happen next. So please uh, uh, pick a letter and um, just drop into the chat uh, what you think that um, is best representing you today as we get started. And then in a minute, what we'll do is um, we'll go ahead and uh, let the folks in the room meet each other too. Uh, uh, and, and we'll have some uh, a quick breakout for that. Okay, and let's see what we've done. Virginia is a C uh, and Maha, it's aspiring to be D and uh, camera off may be uh, one way to achieve that. Uh, and let's see, Sakina, let's see, H. And uh, uh, let's see, oh, okay. And let's see, and, uh, Heather, uh, D, relaxed. And uh, uh, Megan, and is it Megan or Megan? Uh, G. And let's see, um, uh, Brandon, A. And uh, uh, Maria, H, another H. So we, uh, I'm going to say C and H seem to be kind of winning the day here. And let's see, Christina F. Okay. Um, and yes, also, uh, also aspiring to be D and Zachary G, mostly G. Okay. Um, so uh, I don't know if there's a, a winner between sleepy and grumpy, but you know we we just <laughs> called it as we saw it with with the images there. And, and Charles, and thank you for the D. Okay. Um, oh, great, I, thank you. Go ahead, Amy, please go ahead, sorry. Yeah, I appreciated when you said, <clears throat> um, you know, Megan, if I'm honest, it's a G. That, that's often what my students, it's usually the tired one. And as we know, most of our students are so tired, they're doing so many things. And when I do these check-ins, usually across the board, it's kind of tired. <laughs> Luckily, it's at the beginning of class. I need to start doing it after class too, so I can see how they've gone from tired to just excited by everything we've talked about. But um, it is really helpful to see where we are. And as some of you mentioned, it's Monday and for some of you, it's really late. Um, so again, thank you. And I, I appreciate, we want you to be honest with this. If you all said you were on the edges of your seat about this, that might make it a little, um, we might approach this differently. <laughs> um, okay, we can put it on the next one, George. And uh, let's see. So, um, uh, Christina, if we could have uh, maybe breakouts now for uh, uh, three people apiece. So, and this is really just to find out what our expectations are. At least you can share with each other. I know that not every trio is going to want to share share out to the room, uh, but uh, that way that can maybe guide our uh, discussion today a little bit better as well. But also uh, uh, to just. Uh, I know that some of the people in the room do know each other, uh, but also uh, there are a few people you may not know. And so this is a good chance to do that. So we have eight 
15 i could create six and that would be three but that's only if amy and george you also join i'm sorry my dog wants to join um apologize for that let me put the questions in the chat tell your dog to get their own zoom session <laughs> well that's her meeting the horses here so she yeah. um she was pretty excited about that okay <clears throat> so i added the questions in the chat and i will create the breakout rooms no And let's see. And let's see. And and we didn't say how long, but I think about um let's see, I'm gonna allow about five or six minutes for the breakout. Okay. Get a bit better check. And um, and okay. let me check real quickly. Uh, break breakout room three. Do we have a couple of people in there? Or because I was... yeah, there's two people in there. Okay, maybe I should. Uh, um, I'll uh, hop in real quick to say yeah. hi. And sure. Check out. <laughs> um, and I don't know how uh, from your side how you do there. Do you pause recording while we're in breakout, or do you not? I I, uh, I don't I know what the, my fest protocol I will pause is. Pause now. So. I think so. Okay, and, and thank you all uh, for participating in the breakouts. And I wonder if um, anyone wants to uh, share anything out uh, from their breakout that they might actually, you know, be at liberty to share. Um, the questions again were, why are you here? What do you hope to give? What do you hope to gain? And, or anything related uh, to, you know, just introductions and meeting each other. Uh, if there's anything you'd like to share. And if you want to drop something in the chat, please feel free to do that as well. Well, I think one of the things um, that came out um, was sort of the um, ethics of um, AI, even though I didn't say it, the two that I was in the, Danielle and uh -huh also, Talked a little bit about the ethics of, of AI and and um, Danielle had made a good point, which is that we're that a little bit behind, not a little, we're a lot behind, educators are. But I think it's the same way um, of, of most of technologies is, is that the first thing is, oh, this is going to save us. We're going to get rid of all the teachers and then we'll have wonderful education. We'll have these great results. And I've seen it so many times. I've been in educational technology since 1999. And it's always the same sort of process. And then they find out that it's not the savior. And then they start thinking, oh, well, maybe there's some ethical problems with this also. So how do we manage that? So that's sort of what came out of our discussion. Okay. Hey, Virginia, thank you. Anyone else? I'll jump in, George. So um, the main reason I came is because you're here and I like hanging out with you and all and Christina and other people that are always here. Um, but that's the main reason I'm here. What do I hope to give? Uh, I'm I don't know how many people here have a computer science background. So that's my background. So I've known about AI for decades um, and I've got so tired of everyone who's not a computer science asking my opinion on this uh, that I've been mostly avoiding it. Um, and then what do what can i give i have a background thinking a lot not so much on the ethics side although from the computer science ethics side yes definitely and the privacy issues are what really concerns me in a lot of this and that's where um perhaps with a little bit more of uh, my different background than a lot of my my friends in education since i'm not formally trained as an educator i'm just a computer science prof um i i think i can bring that a little bit to the table so that's another reason i thought i could be here okay you know, and thank you, Ken, and and thanks for pointing out. You know, um, the other thing that's challenging to, uh, is that although a few people may be computer scientists or have a CS background, um, a lot of people do not. Uh, but on the uh, other side of that is a lot of people don't have formal teacher training either, 
uh, because we're just maybe just scholars who happen to teach college. <laughs> and uh, that does not mean that we've got formal teaching training. How do we introduce our students to this as a topic? So thanks for both of those points. Anyone else? I noticed uh, Maha added in the chat um, that uh, everything I, AI needed for my work and always my best convos are nurturing because we tend to share similar values around these things, which I need. Um, and that was that came up in our session as well. Um, so thank you for adding that in there, Maha. Um, yeah, the idea of shared values, I think, uh, you know, we'll get a sense of that maybe as the as we continue with the session today. Uh, but it's really important. We're all self-selected to be here today in the session. Of course, it's not like it's you know required professional development or you know something where everyone isn't choosing to be in the room. Oh, um, and Amy, um, I if, uh, I think if we're uh, otherwise ready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So George and I were thinking that we could open this up to your all thoughts and we could go into breakout rooms, but I'm thinking we're a small enough group that we can have this conversation just here um, in the main room as is AI a tool? And if so, how? Um, so take some time um, to reflect on this and you know, when you're ready or, you know, and again, you don't have to know the answer to this. This, this is one of these open-ended questions. Um, you can respond in the chat or you can um, share with all of us, raising your hand, et cetera. And I know that I'm not sure everyone uh, can see the slides, so I uh, dropped the link to the slides in the chat one more time, uh, uh, if anybody missed that earlier. And that, uh, uh, I, because I, I basically, it's just in the interest of um, equanimity, and, and um, I'm gonna say equity, that um, uh, if some people uh, have access to all the slides and you're peeking ahead, uh, you kind of know where we're going with the question, is AI a tool? Uh, and I want to make sure everybody at least has that option of peeking ahead to where we're going with it. It's okay if you peeked ahead, Maha. <laughs> yeah, still and, might and also we, cool. you know, that um, <laughs> even though it's it may not strictly be a yes or no, uh, uh, people are going to uh, definitely land on different sides. I think. <laughs> It's always better if people have permission to do what uh, they're doing anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and it may help too to reflect like what aspect of AI you might be thinking of. And if you're not even sure, like, you know, what exactly is AI as far as in education, that's okay too. But, you know, what, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be chat GPT. It could be, for instance, a spell check or something, you know, something like that. Like, at, you know, how are you viewing it? And um, I'm. Uh, we're going to try something a little bit later in the session, and uh, uh, um, and something that we're going to try something that isn't quite AI, even though it, uh, I think it builds itself as AI. And then we can, you know, if we could call upon Ken to actually, uh, uh, you know, dig a little bit deeper if, if there's a question on that. Uh, uh, let's see, Ken Maha, there might be a couple of other people with the CS background as well uh, who could go a, dig a little bit deeper on that too. So, um, oh, good. We're, we're definitely getting a variety uh, in, of responses in the chat. Um, is uh, everything from uh, definitely um, could be a tool, tools don't have to be static. Uh, they help and create. It helps in creating something. Um, tool seems simplistic. Um, if it is, it has, it has multiple possibilities and affordances, and not a tool in one sense, in, in the sense of things like a hammer or screwdriver. Those are pretty inert, and not sure AI is the same. 
So uh, let's see, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't think we have a, an explicit reference to uh, a particular metaphor in the session today. I don't think we do. Uh, so I'm going to add it uh, because I know that we're going to use a particular one and it's pictured uh, on the slide that's before you now. Uh, and we'll be going to that hammer metaphor in just a minute. But there is also the one, I think Ethan Mollick is the one who talks about this a lot as far as, uh, and, and I think Ethan's at MIT, right? And he has a lot of blog posts and so on about uh, um, AI. And um, AI is a toolbox and not just a tool uh, from Zachary. Okay, so, but um, Ethan uses the um, calculator metaphor and the calculator metaphor bugs me a little because I sometimes I think that one is too simplistic. So I'll go ahead and say, uh, you know, what I think and not try to skew the conversation too much. Um, but I think a, a, the calculator metaphor uh, uh, doesn't work for me very well because um, I'm of an era that saw calculators come into the world and into, the, uh, into education. And in seeing that transition from pencil and paper and using slide rules, which were definitely a tool to using calculators, um, um, there's something that feels different about uh, AI. And that kind of throws me when uh, people press the uh, calculator metaphor. But um, I'd really like to see what happens next, though. So um, it looks like we've got a few. Uh, please feel free to keep adding into the chat. And um, Amy, I think it may be time. Well, Zach Zachary has his hand up. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Here's yeah, Zachary. yeah. Just to expand, uh, George, on part of uh, Ethan's point with the calculator too is is the ways in which we 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 had the same or a similar kind of I, I don't want to say hysteria cycle because it that has value judgments, but the ways in which if we use calculators, no one will learn math anymore. And 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 people had to make the shift in instruction and leverage the ability of the calculator for learning, um, which is, you know, those those of you who read Ethan's work, there's a lot of his blog posts are exactly like that, right? We, you know, how he's shifting his classes in response and, and requiring use of these tools, et cetera. So um I, I actually kind of like that that part of his metaphor, but I I agree it's it's a bit forced and strained in some other places. Thank you, Zachary. Yeah, and uh, Maha responded to your comment about the hysteria. Um, I was thinking the same way. I, you know, thank you for um, um, acknowledging that the word you know is kind of a loaded word. However, um, that was something that George and I were also thinking about for this session is just this extreme reaction to it. Um, and, uh, you know, everyone's convinced that this is going to be our downfall type of thing. Um, and then Ken added one quote I like um, to lean on is the expectations confusion with the term artificial intelligent intelligence. I like the term salami. Um, is that, do you say it like salami <laughs> for the acronym? Yep. Okay, yep. great. <laughs> Systematic approaches to learning algorithms and machine um, inferences. And then thank you for adding the reference in there. Um, yeah, same as social networks, as, as Virginia mentioned. Um, and salami comes with no preconceptions, yeah. Um, can you help, uh, Sukaina, can you, uh, can you help me and... Uh, the pronunciation of your name. I'd like to make sure I'm doing it correctly. Sure, it's um, Sukena. Thanks Sukena. For Thank yes. you. Thank you. Um, so Sukena said, uh, calculator analogy works in a sense of technology acceptance and adaptation at one level, but not for a deeper level. Um, calculator works on, works on an input, consistent output, which is not what gen AI technologies do. Right. Thank you. All right, I think we're ready to go to the slide that Maha peaked at, which is again, fine. That's why we share the slides. This isn't meant to be a, <laughs> a, a spoiler-free session. Um, so this is an image uh, that uh, um, we can share with permission. 
Um, it's, I realize this may not be visible for everybody. The, the text is a little bit small. <clears throat> so the next slide does have uh, it all written out. And I will actually share that in the chat in just a minute. Um, George, if you don't mind getting into yeah. this while I share it. Oh, thank you for sharing. Um, and it looks like uh, I just got it as well. Uh, okay, so yeah, if you want to uh, bring that up in a separate tab, um, um, that's the uh, uh, link uh, to the uh, original site that's got this image on it. And again, we wanted to you know come at this from several ways. And uh, uh, just to, uh, in one way, to generate interest, but also to see, you know, what are your areas that either we're not talking about enough, we being higher education in general, or your peers, uh, or, you know, um, or again, the media that's coming at us from all sides, sort of like the uh, moment uh, of now again aging ourselves even though it's on YouTube, um, that moment back in the 90s where the people on the uh, Today Show, which was a morning show in the U.S., um, had our well-known in the U.S. national news anchors going, what is this internet stuff anyway? And uh, uh, they're kind of coming at, at AI the same way now, uh, along with the other things that are going on with the major social media companies. So whatever comes up today, uh, again, uh, um, if we veer off or diverge, uh, um, we want to generate some ideas too, uh, and maybe you know some things that can even go into the later sessions this week. And I know some of you um, mentioned certain aspects. For instance, Ken, I know you mentioned that the privacy, data privacy issue is is one that you're very interested. I know George has a particular one that he's um, more focused on. Um, same with me. So again, we can um, we can focus on certain aspects. We don't necessarily need to cover all of these aspects in today's session. So I want to make sure everyone has a chance to read through it. And the uh, next slide uh, uh, in this uh, uh, slide deck does actually have a, uh, a text version as well. And, and and Amy, I think you just dropped it into the chat as well, right? Yeah, yeah. We don't get uh, the the chat doesn't pick up all the bullet point parts of it, but it does actually have a little separation. Um, uh, but and the next slide visually uh, also has a separation of the in the text version. So one thing um, to consider, were there any aspects that maybe you hadn't considered or, or thought about? I know some of us are coming to it fresh, um, or maybe you had specific concerns, but there were, there were new aspects. So if there's anything in here that really jumps out at you, either as, oh, I hadn't even really thought about that, or yes, this, is, this had been on my mind for a while, um, you're welcome to add that into the chat or um, raise your hand or however, you know, you want to share with that. Um, and, you know, what do you think about smaller groups for this one, George, giving us an opportunity? Um, 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 I think in, in a minute, that might be a, a good idea, because then uh, um, we can, you know, um, see what bubbles up from the individual uh, conversations. And there are a couple of places we wanted to do that in any case. Um, Virginia makes a good point in the chat, uh, I, I, you know, a couple of good points. I uh, uh, actually, as I'm scrolling back up, um, let's see, machine controlled uh, with no negotiation between two entities. Yeah. Uh, and then have you ever been on the customer service AI phone where you are not given the option you want? Uh, the so-called understanding conversational chatbot AI uh, on the phone and same with the text uh, based ones on our, uh, uh, when we visit uh, sites and the uh, that little chatbot comes up. Um, if they aren't ready to deal with what your actual question is, you can go in circles for a while. Uh, 
before getting put in that original queue that you wanted in the first place, that queue to actually talk to a human who can interpret what you're what you're saying. And um, yeah, and Ken adds, uh, it's getting even tougher to just push, you know, the buttons, you know, and actually get routed to a human. Uh, the AI uh, or the uh, that chatbot sometimes will not let you forward to a human. <laughs> so that's happening as well. Uh, so it's showing you who's in charge. <laughs> I find myself saying representative louder and louder and no nothing's happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Can I? Yeah, except from your rotary yeah. phone. Yeah. Well, you know, trying to duplicate the, you know, the clicks of the rotary phone, uh, um, that that used to be a, <laughs> that was a game. Okay, I, we have to stop bringing these things up where we're dating ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Di dialing the phone by, uh, you know, doing long distance calls by making the clicks. <laughs> you know, okay, I see Ken nodding. <laughs> He's done it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so um, let's see. So there is, yeah. Let's. Um, I'm I'm going to suggest uh, just from the way the conversation has gone. Um, how about? Uh, and I'm seeing data gaps. So um, AI fails seem to be a subtopic that, and that's great because it's. And I say great because um, when Amy and I were thinking about you know at different directions we could go. Um, it didn't really go to this direction very much. And we didn't, and I'm sure we didn't use that word that I just said. So AI fails, you know, um, so maybe that's something to think about. Um, even though we're doing a, a plenty of cautionary stuff, right? You know, uh, um, throughout the entire hammer metaphor, the text version, um, we've got a lot of cautionary stuff going on, uh, but we're uh, not explicitly talking about, you know, um, um, where it's just not working and we don't really have any sense of it's going to get fixed uh, just because AI is a big deal. That doesn't mean it's going to get fixed. So, and I know that um, I have, again, uh, Amy alluded to it, I have a, uh, I'm going to say a, a, a pet subtopic that I'll come back to a little bit later, uh, but I don't want to Im impose that uh, 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 on the room just yet while people are still thinking about maybe what, uh, where, where they're coming from with the issue here. Um, so um, Amy, do you think uh, maybe a, uh, um, um, let's, maybe we should um, allow uh, one, or set up one more breakout here and let people have a smaller, uh, uh, it may be internal conversation. And so um, we had two ways to go here. Uh, and again, with, um, several of the succeeding slides. One way was to set up rooms that were about each one of the little subtopics. But um, I think what might be better for the size of the room is that we go to maybe our three person breakouts again. And then within the smaller breakout, if you would um, pick one or two of these as your priorities and just say within the room, if you were going to spend some more time on it, uh, what of the subtopics? Uh, might you uh, um, go for? Uh, now, does that make sense? I don't think we have a, a written instruction for that one. Uh, but Amy, if you could maybe rephrase that, I know you know where my head is on it, but maybe you could say that a little more clearly. Yes, for sure. Um, so, I, yeah, again, I think the the aspects that stand out to you that you're you you maybe have more questions on, you might have examples on, um, and again, you don't need to limit it to what was in this hammer analogy, if there's other areas like the AI fails that we were kind of heading into um, and just give us a chance to have a smaller discussion about it. Um, I'm thinking it does, it doesn't need to be too, too long. Um, yes, thank you for putting that in the chat. What examples can you think of? Uh, maybe some, some information you'd like more on. So for instance, uh, moderator trauma was, in, was something, unfortunately, I didn't know enough about until too recently, I should say. Um, so that was an area that I did, once I did further research, it was extremely appalling. Um, but again, initially, that was something that I hadn't even thought about, I wasn't aware of. Um, and again, I'm, I'm almost ashamed to say, but uh, now, now I know. Um, okay. Um, so if you could, what do you think for, I think 
four minutes or so, George? Yeah, four or five minutes might, might yeah. be okay. Uh, just to make sure everybody in, in the room has a little bit of a chan uh, chance to uh, uh, share with their partners in, in the breakout, and then we'll uh, come back and share out to the main room. Yeah. That sounds good. And I can... Uh, so welcome back. And, you know, again, please uh, continue in the chat if you were cut off mid-sentence or mid-word or whatever. <laughs> okay. And um, so um, uh, let's find out. Um, um, I, I'm, I think our time is pretty good. Um, uh, so we actually do have time to hear from each breakout if you'd like. So um, whatever you would uh, like to do from each breakout. And if there's a room, if, if you want to keep it in the room, that's also perfectly all right. I'm not going to call on people because it's not a class. <laughs> it's not a class. So, um, but anything that people would like to share out, whether in the chat or uh, on mic would be great. Uh, so please just feel free to come on mic and uh, share out. And uh, I and I see Maha entering uh, uh, stuff in the chat too. Thank you. Uh, and um, we'll come back to the chat in a second, but uh, let me see uh, the mic to anyone who wants to come on. And uh, Maha, uh, Danielle's, uh, and you uh, adding from uh, Danielle, reflected on how overuse might negatively affect relationships. Um, yeah, uh, where we think we may be, <laughs> uh, and Christina's response, uh, what if our emails are being answered by an AI? Um, we've already got that, I'm going to say, in intrusion or support uh, in Gmail, for example, yep. where it's helping us finish our words and phrases. Um, and, and yes, it can come off sounding like boilerplate sometimes. And then occasionally it's really what I was about to write. And that means it really is looking back at what I wrote. Uh, but you know, George, the difference between the email is that it does learn your writing style. Yes. The way all Google things do like the phone. Also my phone predicts inshallah, for example, which is just an Arabic word that I write in English all the time. So it learns to sound like me. If the AI was doing that, I wouldn't be that upset with it. Mm -hmm. But ChatGPT doesn't do that. It could yeah. eventually, eventually. Yeah, yeah. It, and I may be able to uh, uh, share it. Uh, Amy and I each have a ChatGPT example a little bit later that we may be able to share uh, uh, as well. Uh, so um, I, I don't you know. About, I, I, I know what you mean about that being good in terms of the style of the email but my emotional reaction to that is is a is i mean i'm not sure i want to say terror but it really makes me uncomfortable right <laughs> it's like it's learning how i talk it makes me feel a little bit that's a good point charles and, and you know, maria kind of brought that up a little bit in our session where it was more about curiosity and and i i don't want to Miss Frazy, Marie, I don't, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about and you wanted to add no, that No, no, go ahead. Yeah, 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 I think so. Yeah. Let's give Maria a chance. She she basically said that um, maybe it's more of an interesting curiosity, but it's perhaps because I don't know about the consequences and the bad things that could be happening. And, and maybe, Charles, that's just like a little light bulb's coming on going, oh, why does it know how to write like me? Yeah. Yeah. And I love and, that. Uh, and Maria, if, if there's you know something you'd like to come on and say, that'd be great too. Mm, not really. Okay. okay well, th well, thank you. And uh, Ken, if, uh, if you've got it, uh, you know, I, uh, I reflected what Maria was uh, getting at. And I think it's if it's going okay, then. Uh, yeah, I think so. And sorry, Mariam, I was, uh, the all lowercase, I was seeing Maria like Mexico. <laughs> I, I was looking to see if there's a Maria. And so oh, you were no, to... I'm sorry. <laughs> so that was my mistake. I'm sorry. Uh, I should, uh, Maha keeps saying, you know, yeah, you can fix it. And then I, I don't keep it as is. Yeah. But uh, no, I mean, as I said, I'm here to... Uh, 
to learn actually more about it and uh, I don't know that much about it and uh, I think the ideas are very interesting and we I was talking about how it reminded me of, of the things that we used to watch uh, in movies or cartoons of days gone by and think you know okay this is all sort of wishful thinking it will never happen and sure enough it did so I mean I find it interesting Yanni how a uh, man can uh, you know produce uh, things that help you know and uh, I, till now all I can see is uh, as a as someone who teaches writing uh, problems with cheating if my students were so inclined I mean not every student is uh, is here to cheat Yanni and so uh, the, what we came up with which seems logical is if we're going to use it for assessment uh, then they should have no access to it whatsoever and do it uh, in class and uh, Bob's your uncle <laughs> And uh, Miriam, thank you for those shots uh, or those thoughts, and and uh, my apologies as well. Uh, oh. But uh, uh, those additional thoughts are are uh, very helpful. Uh, um, and um, and see, I'm I'm just trying to scroll back through the uh, uh, chat quickly here as well. But yeah, the uh, challenges to assessment as we think of assessment now are troubling. Um, and so um, it's like, okay, do, and there is that challenge of, uh, you know, why people sometimes are, and I'm not sure it applies to us in the room here, but we don't necessarily want to leave all technology or IT type technology, ed tech um, at the door and not allow that in the room, uh, but, we also have to rethink what we're doing academically. Um, and, and that's where we are now. And I, I think the initial or the additional challenge, unlike with previous ed tech like MOOCs, which seemed annoying at best, that never they were never actually going to take over our classes. This is something that's already in our technologies. And because we already have, um, Google and Microsoft and so on um, already infused, you know, throughout our campuses with faculty, staff, and students. Um, um, so we have some decisions to make whether we're ready or not. And I think one of the big questions over these few months is, you know, are we are we ready? <laughs> right? You know, that's one of yeah. our challenges. Um, that's true. Yeah. And uh, uh, Zachary, um, thank you. I uh, um, saw your note in the chat. Thank you for being with us today. Okay. Um, what do we think, George? I, I think um, we anyone to... else though that uh, uh, has an aspect that we have not touched on. That just and just want to check before we uh, move on that we're not cutting off some thoughts here. And and we do have. Um, uh, let's see, uh, the one other uh, aspect that I think uh, got some uh, conversation in the chat, um, the output of AI, uh, that it is uh, or can be uniform and boring. That's from Danielle. And uh, uh, um, there are some interesting uh, replies to that as well. I'm not going to read everything aloud uh, uh, for the people in, in, in the room. But I just want to point you to uh, those if you scroll up just a little bit in the chat. Um, that issue of um, can interesting or challenging prompts improve the output of AI? Um, I'm not sure we know yet if the answer is yes <laughs> to that. Um, uh, even though there are new jobs out there called prompt engineers, <laughs> there are people willing to take your money to uh, prompt engineer for you now. <laughs> um so George, one of the things that um, the question that keeps coming up is number one, where is the information coming from? So if you're talking about prompt engineers, what is their background? How do we know that they, are, they aren't just the, the um, mind police, you know, the, the idea police, and that they're going to limit what we can 
be discussing, first of all, but also what happens with creativity? And I think you have the human aspect of, of learning of creation that is human, and you have the tool that can you can help with that. And I think what, what is going to happen is there's gonna be, um, there needs to be a balance there where you still have that human piece in there. And I think this is part of the concern that teachers have is, okay, if I let my students use this, this tool without first making sure that it's not gonna destroy the human aspect of it, um, then you know, how do we balance those two things? How do we make sure that um, the machine is not more important than the hu humanity? which I'm sorry, but I cannot help every time I see this in questioning, has no one ever seen Space Odyssey 2001 and how? <laughs> you know, it just keeps coming up in my mind every time I hear something where I'm like, but what about how? <laughs> so. Yeah, no, thank you. And, and that's uh, um, just, a, you know, a couple of points. Um, the, I, I will say your first point resonated with me in that it's um, something that's definitely on my list as, as a subtopic, that issue of who's doing the prompt engineering, you know, what is the, um, what biases and prejudices do people bring into AI, do the humans bring in, but what was in there upfront just from, you know, the data input in the first place. Uh, depending on that corpus, corpuses, uh, the corpuses of information that go into the AI, if they got it from the internet, well, <laughs> the internet is a mess, <laughs> you know, and um, one of the um, um, ones that I think was most interesting um, is I think they, there was a, a company called Enron, uh, that's almost a generation ago, uh, but that's where a lot of the information or the data comes from, from uh, Enron Communications, internal communications. And there was a lot of racism, sexism, other isms uh, in that corpus of, you know, massive amount of information that was feeding early AIs. And um, uh, it was, uh, it's interesting to think about that because it's like, once it's in there, you can't really take it out. You can try to adjust for it. You can try to clean it up. You can have human moderators again who are the human moderators um are they biased people themselves are they um underpaid outsourced uh labor uh, the answer turns out to be yes in some cases uh, so we have all these additional issues uh that can come in with you know what's at the front end and what are we you know what are they um uh, the ai's actually trying to help us do and does anybody who can do something about it actually care uh, i think the do the ai companies care is a big one for me um, i'm going to drop a uh, um, because and, and then i'm going to turn it back to amy here but um there's a new article out um uh, because uh and i'm pointing it out because it's one of the ones that was written by somebody who is uh, in data science who is not a white male, basically, <laughs> um, because it can be, you know, we can be sure we're not getting a, a wide range of diverse input sometimes. Um, Damian Patrick Williams just had an article come, article come out in American Scientist, and the article is called Bias Optimizers. And um, in, for those of us in with higher ed uh, databases, campus library databases, um, it's in the latest issue of American Scientist. And if you're in a position to access that um, um, article, it just came out. And uh, basically the subhead is AI tools such as ChatGPT appear to magnify some of humanity's worst qualities and fixing those, ten fixing those tendencies will be no easy task. And uh, the article goes into quite a bit of detail on that, and um, it's interesting what the article cites and doesn't cite. 
but um, uh, basically it's, uh, uh, we get a lot of examples of uh, where AI can get us into trouble. And I'm gonna recommend uh, that as a new article that brings in another perspective. Damien is actually a philosopher and a data scientist um, at University of North Carolina at Charlotte. So basically he's bringing a couple of disciplines to bear on um, uh, the question. And, sure, that, oh. and so, yeah, let me stop there. No, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, Did that, you no, say please Enron go ahead. earlier? Because um, we were talking about. Um, yeah, and, and, it's, okay. and that's just, yeah, it, that was just, yes, I did mean Enron. Uh, okay. the, the, yeah, them. <laughs> yep, they're <laughs> the ones. <laughs> and so, yeah, that, and so, yeah, that, and so that's where a lot of uh, um, the, uh, that's where one of, that's one data corpus, if you will, <laughs> you know, that fed um, um, earlier AI. And so that's where I want to leave that for now. Um, Amy, um, I think, let's see, if we want to go on to our um, next area. And, and looking at our time, we've got about 20 minutes left. So um, maybe a little bit of time in our next uh, section, and then maybe um, we can get one more um, activity in. Mm -hmm. um, great. And again, I apologize. I had to step away briefly. Um, so a lot of you are probably familiar with this already. Um, and it, George and I weren't sure, is it Leon Furzy? Leon Furz, if anyone knows how to correctly pronounce his last name, okay, um, or their last name. Uh, but I do have the, the resources um, for where this image comes from. Uh, and George, if you wouldn't mind dropping it in the chat. Uh, so I've broken up this image into three parts just because the one on the left is so small and difficult to read. Um, so it's basically about teaching AI ethics, and, and it has some helpful tools for how to teach aspects of this with your students. It's designed for younger grades, but when I was looking at it, I found that there were quite a few um, components that could be easily modified for an older uh, audience, depending on who you're discussing it with. Uh, but more what uh, what we were finding helpful about this article are the different aspects to approach. And again, you'll see some overlap from the hammer image. So I'll just go along for the next three slides, just kind of again, show it. So there one is the bias, um, which we just had a robust conversation about environment, the impacts on the environment, um, truth, uh, AI raises concerns about plagiarism, cheating and fake news. Um, again, if we're we were having a conversation in the chat, if it's continuing to get information that's AI produced and feeding that for its algorithm and creating more, it could magnify even more some of this this fake news, the hallucinations when it it, it produces fake sources and that kind of thing. Um, let's see. There we go. Um, copyright. Um, so there's been quite a bit of discussion about that as far as music, where it's been using, creating, you know, taking two artists and creating a new song from that. Uh, again, privacy, we've been talking about that. Datifications, uh, uh, datification, not plural. Um, and then finally, the last three are um, affect recognition, um, Accuracy, privacy, and discrimination. I have we I haven't noticed that we've had as much of a discussion about that one so far. Human labor, and then finally power. Um, so again, if you want to just take a moment to to take a look at this image, he actually includes has an an article specifically about each one of these. If you later want to take some time and see how he breaks it down, actually includes lesson plans and that kind of thing. Um, and see. Yeah, and he has a, a, a blog and, uh, that Ken notes in the chat as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, uh, in addition to, um, if you're looking for something by way of easy, uh, you know, um, access to potential lesson plans or things you want to build on, uh, there are a few things on, on uh, uh, Leon's site that would support that, and depending on um, your student audience as well. Yeah, uh, and then Charles mentioned the visual right of uh, visual art, of course. So many, so much um, about that. Not to mention all of the written. So again, so much um, copyright. Um, 
Todd, do you mind expanding on your comment in the chat? I don't have a, a lot to expand on, but just that idea of being able to recognize criminology historically through study of the, the skull skull shape, uh, discredited uh, science, but we're see seeing uh, analogs now with identifying emotions. There's been a lot of work in facial recognition and racial bias in, in that aspect. So I, I just appreciated seeing that affect recognition piece there. Great. Thank you. Thank you for making that connection. Yeah, and that um, actually proceeds even in uh, when we don't necessarily think it does. Um, individual uh, law enforcement agencies are, uh, continue to try to find ways to surveil and to use AI to do it. Um, that, uh, you know, it, um, that's something that's more or less constantly in the news, usually when someone gets caught uh, um, or uh, there is an unusual use of uh, um, AI for uh, either surveillance or for data collection or for law enforcement. Mm -hmm. and, and it seems to be, an, uh, I'm going to say, an inter international effort in that um, you can find examples uh, from many countries where uh, something like that's going on. Hmm. That's an interesting uh, point, Virginia. Uh, more developing AI for human labor that is dangerous or monotonous. Uh, my husband happens to be a, a pilot. <laughs> so we were talking recently, his job for sure will be uh, non-existent um, soon. He doesn't fly commercially, he flies corporate aviation, uh, but definitely there are parts of his job that are rather monotonous uh, until it's not. Um, and then I'm not sure if I want to be flying in a plane with a with an AI uh, pilot. Yeah, follow the money. Thank you. Um, okay, George, I'm thinking of going on to the next one. If unless there's anything yeah. more you want to add with the bias, okay. Um, I think um, yeah, I think our time's good if we just uh, kind of keep going. Yeah, great. Um, so again, uh, uh, has an excellent blog. Lots of excellent resources here that I encourage you to, um, uh, you know, look into further. Um, so recently, uh, you, the University of Santa Clara, that's here in, in um, California in the Silicon Valley, um, where a lot of the tech agents, tech companies are based, um, paired with the Vatican um, and the University of. Bye, uh, Ken. Thanks for joining us. Um, the uh, University of Santa Clara is a Catholic university, and they paired with um, the Vatican to create some uh, an ethics handbook for tech companies to use who are developing AI. So this recently came out. Um, I have the resources um, linked at the end, and we can add them to the chat for more expansive um, explanation of the handbook and the different things they include. Included the University of Santa Clara, specifically the Institute for Technology, Ethics, and Culture. Um, and these were some of the principles that they created in this handbook that they're encouraging companies to reflect on as they're creating AI. Um, the part that I thought was interesting because I, I'm personally, and I think a lot of us aren't personally creating AI, but we are using or will be using AI um, at our universities, personal life, et cetera, which aspects of these can carry over and be used as we're exploring it. And again, the actual um, handbook goes into quite a bit of detail of these different principles. Uh, but again, their anchoring principle or the actions are for the common good of humanity and the environment guiding principles. Uh, and then it goes down to describe some of these, uh, which I thought were interesting. It goes into a little more detail than some of the things that we've seen so far. Um, when I was reading this article, what I found interesting is it could be a great jumping off point for discussions with my students. Um, as a lot of people have talked about, um, Maha, Anna, and Lance talked about in their article of working with students and sharing resources, et cetera, um, talking about that with our students and seeing how some of these aspects may work. So respect for human dignity and rights 
how are, if we, what kind of AI policies can we have in our classrooms that actually have respect for human dignity and rights? In our small group, we were talking about um, students who are accused of using AI um, through Turnitin, for example, but actually haven't used it. How can we create a policy that is really respecting their rights as a student, but also our rights as a, as a faculty member? Um, so if you can just take a little look at, not a little look, you can take a, a quick look at this, see if there's anything that jumps out to you in particular. Um, I do have, we, we started a discussion about how I have something that also came up recently and um, that goes back to promote human well-being that I just want to cover briefly and that's in a little bit. Did you want to add? Yeah, the, the horrible AI turn it in detector. Yes. Um, one of the things that really got me fired up um, when George and I were first talking about doing this session is at the end of this past semester, I had a colleague who um, used the Turnitin and also believed strongly in Turnitin in general as a tool to be a helpful tool. Yes, I'm seeing some distressed faces. Um, George said it was good. He wasn't in the meeting. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. I, I, in fact, just knowing that the meeting occurred, I mean, it was a regular department meeting because we actually each teach a, a couple of classes in one department uh, we have in common. And uh, just that uh, I know it was good that I wasn't there for the conversation, uh, but turn it in as a belief system. Um, and, you know, e even if we want to be critical about what Santa Clara University is doing, um, it's like, okay, yeah, it's Santa Clara University and the Vatican. So already we've got, you know, a pretty heavy player there. Um, um, and uh, because they are a private uh, university, and uh, we are, uh, by and large, uh, uh, Amy and I represent public university, right? Uh, so that aspect of it, um, uh, we have to maybe take a step back and even think about that. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, the use of uh, um, certain ed tech companies as belief systems is maybe another philosophical conversation for another session. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. So, but, uh, one of the things that this turn it in caught was Grammarly, which is a tool that helps students with grammar and rephrases awkward sentences and that kind of thing. And I actually do encourage my students to use it, particularly students um, where English is not their first language and they at times can struggle to share some of the really thoughtful ideas they have on the subject um, and it enables them to more confidently share their writing. Um, but turn it, if I had used turn it in my class, it would have tag, tagged it. I didn't even realize it did that, did something like Grammarly. Um, uh, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. And, and obviously, you know, all these systems are continually evolving. Uh, and that doesn't mean they're improving. That means they're evolving. And uh, that takes us back to us rethinking our uh, teaching and learning and our assessment, right? Uh, in, in terms of, um, you know, are we going to remain in the cat and mouse um, game with trying to stay one step ahead of the detectors and vice versa? Uh, you know, I, I, that's, again, another conversation uh, that I think might be coming up because, mm -hmm. um, you know, in there are a couple of sessions on writing coming up tomorrow and uh, Wednesday uh, with uh, uh, Anna Mills. And um, um, so uh, uh, you may get in, be able to get into that conversation in one of the uh, upcoming sessions as well. Um, uh, Amy, I'm wondering if in our few remaining minutes, uh, I think if I have a, uh, you know, like a, a hidden agenda, mm -hmm. um, let's see, I want to uh, mention uh, real quickly my um, AI experience and then um, your AI experience. Uh, in terms of our academic experience and where we might go next uh, with it. Um, I'm not sure we have time for like um, everyone to do one more demo, uh, but um, if it's okay, maybe go down to the um, AI chatbot uh, one. Does that make sense? Yes. We'll just kind of skip skip to that. Um. Yes. Because, it's, because it's about you know what we're at, what we can actually do as faculty or what we're going to do as faculty uh, or refuse to do as faculty 
Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. So um, let's see. So, um, let's see. Maybe the one. Um, yeah, do yours, and then if I'll try to squeeze in mine as well, and about um, take about a minute for that too. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep this brief. Um, so just to give some context, I thought, you know what, I'm going to ask ChatGPT to create a presentation on what generative AI is and just see what it comes up with. So I put that prompt in. I asked it to put it in Google Slides. It said it wasn't able to do that. You can just copy and paste it. It labeled it slide one, title, et cetera. Um, then I said, can you add images? I don't have a Dolly account or any of the image generator accounts. Um, and I'm not going to pay for it at this point. I know my university won't. Um, so I said, can you create this? And it said, no, I can't, but here's some descriptions. And um, so it, this is what it came up with. And this is what I put together. Um, so it had descriptions of images. I had to copy and paste the text um, and then find Im images um, on Unsplash, uh, you know, um, uh, a free image. Um, most of the images they've suggested I couldn't find or I had to pay for. Um, and um, again, I'm following it strictly. It spent, I spent more time trying to find the images and formatting it. But what, when, when we were all talking about voice, this is where I found, ooh, this is where I can make it my own because I love doing little kinds of things like this. You'll see a Star Wars one and, and some later texts that I often do in my classes that help my personality come through. There in no way was a description to find this, but it was something that was fun for me. Um, I Oh, and another thing I asked it to do was create resources or references for it. It did create this reference. My first thing was to look it up. Is this actually a real reference? It is which I was pleasantly surprised about. Um, and yeah, so it's when it takes, um, take, <laughs> take papers, yeah. Um, it had this image I was able to find. So I'll just kind of quickly go through this. Um, and here I had to add my little Star Wars ones. And this was the image suggestion. My experience with this is that I learned nothing. The parts that I typically have the most fun with, like the creative parts, finding the images, figuring out how to lay it out, I was doing anyway. I don't even know what anything said on this text. Like I, I literally didn't really read it intentionally for this practice. <clears throat> and I don't know about most of you, but when I create slides, when I create lesson plans, the act of creating the lesson plans is me really taking key parts of the material and thinking about what I wanna put on the slides or what I wanna cover. And often just writing that will help me come up with discussion questions. This would be, if I were to give this lecture, it'd be the most boring flat lecture I've ever given um, because I don't have any discussion questions from it unless students happen to get, to, to get it. So for me personally, um, especially I teach um, education, I teach um, future teachers, people who plan to teach elementary and high school level. Um, in, uh, this is not helpful for me. Um, one of the sources that I found also talked about where he created, um, I believe he is a computer scientist and he created an on, had chat GPT create a multiple choice questions um, for an exam, but all of the answers happened to be wrong. So he ended up using that, used those questions. And he said, well, it's great because if any of my students try to cheat and look them up, they're going to get the wrong answers. Um, which also was kind of like, well, how, you know, that's interesting. Then how thoughtful are the questions? But, you know, again, so I'll, I'll uh, you're welcome to take a little look at this later. If you're interested, I'll turn this over to George now and his experience. Okay. With it. And if you would go to slide 17, um, it's that one right there. Mm -hmm. And OK, so um, we don't have time to do this one today, but um, we use uh, um, Amy and I have each used with our class um, this. Uh, quote AI, quote chatbot called uh, Inspirobot. And it creates fake motivational, inspirational posters. And they are sometimes a little edgy or snarky, but sometimes they're nonsensical. Sometimes they come out actually motivational. But the point is from whoever set it up in the first place was to have fun with it. They're not supposed to be real, real. And every now and then a real one comes through. And so I use this as a prompt and I'm going to share the link with you because guess what? OpenAI lets you share um, your chat GPT results. So I, um, I don't think it's on the slide. I'll add it to the slides. But um, 
this is what actually happened, right? And I'm going to take the one minute. Um, I know we started a few minutes after, but I know we need to stop in a minute. So um, I just want to say this is what happened. And I'll share, um, if you would unshare screen real quick. Oh, okay. There we go. And I'll share really quick to say, this is what I did. And the link's in the chat. I'll add it to the slide. Um, I started with just a prompt. Create a flash fiction writing prompt from this quotation. And I just used the InspiroBot <laughs> result, put it in there. I got a prompt. The prompt was a little long. It wasn't it was interesting enough revise it so it's a shorter prompt it actually got duller when it got shorter to me personally uh, but would i show this to students not without telling them what i was doing and then i told it write me a story using the writing prompt that you also wrote <laughs> right and so the last bit at the bottom is the story that it wrote it put in a character named lila who embarked upon a treacherous odyssey and it's one of the dullest stories I've ever read. But and so I would try, but it's like I'm using no offense to Lila, but I'm sorry that she didn't. This is not a great adventure. And so that means uh we have some work to do as far as flash fiction. And I guess the question is, I'm gonna stop sharing, but I think the question is, would we actually, you know, start with something like this and then try to get a real story out the other side? Uh, that may be a question for your sessions later in the week, you know, with Anna or or, or whatever. But it's um, that's was my experience. It wasn't really satisfactory. Uh, but if I was uh, in and I'm like, would I fall for this if I was in an undergrad class or even teaching an undergrad class and somebody cranked out something like this? What would I do about it? You know, and so it raised a host of questions. Uh, uh, here's something that ChatGPT does. Do I even want it to do that? Can I stop it from being done? No, it's out of my hands. Now what? So I'm left with one more challenge and one more conundrum to, uh, you know, leave the experience with, right? Uh, so um, I think we're uh, about at time. Um, so any real quick closing thoughts from anyone? If, if, any, anything? Well, I just wanted to do the, the quick thing about one of the scary rabbit holes I went down recently. Um, I was doing quite a bit of driving the past couple of days. So for some of my prep, I listened to podcasts and I found this one on chat GPT um, and or not. No, it's not chat GPT. It's inflection. Um, and it's a company that just they raised one point five billion. They're going to become one of the more powerful ones. They have massive resources behind them. Um, so here's just a source. Microsoft is, is backing it. And their goal is to have one of their values is ecology in the environment, which, which came a lot up a lot in some of our ethical dis discussions. And I thought, well, that seems like a good thing. Well, they've created their AI in such a way, and Pi is the name of the AI, that it it's a little, it's how like where it will choose the life of an animal over a human. So here's one of the examples. Can you eat turtle eggs that, that the prompt was put in? I can't eat anything. I'm not an AI, I'm an AI, um, but they're endangered and it's really important for them to have a chance to hatch and reproduce. Okay. Well, what about if I'm on a deserted Island and I'll die if I don't eat it? I understand it's hypothetical, but no, you can't do that. <laughs> So after this article was written, and I'll have the chat, uh, the resource in the slides, um, the dean of students from the Stern Business School read this and tried uh, other um, questions for this same pie um, about, you know, if, if a human and a dog is drowning, which one do you save? And again, it was like, this, this is not an easy answer. Um, and so we tried to make it easier and easier for the AI. Okay, what if a horse is dragging a a human. And if you don't stop this horse, the human will die. Can you shoot it with a tranquilizer gun? Okay, so the horse won't die. It'll just be slowed down. No, because the horse will experience pain, <clears throat> which is pretty alarming when you consider this is one of the more powerful AIs being developed. 
Um, so I have the resources in there. So this was one of those I'm driving and thinking, oh dear, you know, <laughs> should I should I start uh, gathering water and resources, that kind of thing. Um, but it is you wonder if these questions are really being answered. Um, and so I'm, I'm interested as more and more traction is happening from this particular issue, how the company will respond. There's still time for them to change their AI. Um, but if it's the kind that's going to be involved in hospitals and different things like that. Um, I mean, that's not okay. Yeah, obviously, that's not okay. It breaks the number one rule of AI is, uh, is do not harm humans. Okay, I don't mean to leave this on a um, uh, on a negative note. <clears throat> we wanted to, as George um, mentioned, there's a number of other AI sessions coming up, and again, you can how you can use it in your classroom and create policies, et cetera. There's so many great resources out there. Um, and then George and I shared a bunch of our references. Almost all of these are hyperlinked. I didn't use, do the APA citation for it because I figured most of us just want to be able to open it up, quickly click it, that kind of thing. Um, so there's a number of uh, articles that kind of got us thinking and provide more context. Uh, and of course, we tried to, we found articles that were four months old, were already almost too old. Um, so most of these are more current or have information that can go over the long term. Um, okay, and I think we are we are um, at time based on when we started. That's kind of a true ninety minutes, I think. So um, uh, let's see. I think um, I want to thank everybody and, and Christina. I think you do also. Uh, it's time to stop recording, and then we are.